Oh, you guys, I'm a little nervous for today's video. For today's video, we are going to do a long-awaited Q&A in celebration of hitting 75,000 subscribers. Obviously, it's not about the number, but it really is still a milestone and a guide to me and just feels really great that at some point in the last four years, 75,000 people have wanted to subscribe to me. Um, yeah, so I thought a Q&A would be fitting for this celebration. So thank you all for being here and being subscribed to my channel and may or may not be a giveaway in this video to celebrate. Whatever. Anyways, before we get into the Q&A portion, and I will be getting ready, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about today's sponsor for today's video, which is Muse Beauty Pro, because we have big news, you guys. The Esum X Morgan Turner Makeup Brush Bundle, okay? There was a number of you who told me that this wasn't within your budget, which is completely understandable. Just wanted to share with you guys that Muse Beauty Pro now has a new payment option of Firm in case you wanted to get your hands on my brush bundle if it was a little out of budget for you. If you don't know what a firm is. It allows you to buy now and then pay later. You set up a payment plan. So that way it doesn't it doesn't hurt you right at once, right in the heart, you know? So I'm really excited that you have this option now because my brush set is limited, you guys. The last day it will be available is the day after Christmas. So if you do want the bundle, this is the only time that you can really pick it up. And by the way, if you want to get anything from the Muse Beauty site or my brush set, you're gonna have to order now in order to get it before Christmas. December 15th is the last day for guaranteed delivery before Christmas. So just keep that in mind. While I'm getting ready, I'm going to be using my brush set, of course, which you can see is like dingy and disgusting because I've been using it all, but we did just wanna let you guys know that a new payment option is now available and it's worth taking a look at the holiday shop that they have going on right now as well. There's lots of great discounts, so this payment option I am really excited for you guys to have because I know a lot of you love these types of payment options. Let's uh let's get into the Q&A. The theme of today's makeup that I chose, while it isn't the main zhuzh of the video, I picked a lot of drugstore products that I have been wanting to try but it just hasn't fit into a video yet and some of them are kind of old. <laughs> You'll see that and a lot of the complexion products aren't drugstore but majority of the new products that I'm trying today are drugstore so I will have a picture over of what I'm using so that you can see just in case I don't mention it but we are going to start off by prepping the skin with this old collection from out from the electric mood collection this is the illuminating elixir priming serum it's been like five minutes now let's get into the Q&A portion so fun fact this looks weird. Fun fact, I have been on YouTube for almost four years now. In January it will make four years and in those four years I have only ever done one Q&A. And that Q&A I did almost to a T one year ago. It was December 12th. And I'm filming this on the 13th, so very, very close. And the reason I don't do Q&As is because I am super weird about talking to myself. I'm a very private person. In the last year, I've shared more than I ever have with you guys. But let me tell you, when I was a teacher, I didn't tell y'all nothing. Nothing. I didn't know who was watching me. Didn't know if it was my students, my students' parents. None y'all knew anything, but now that I'm no longer a teacher, I feel definitely more comfortable to share with you guys, as well as lots of life changes have happened in the last year that I kind of couldn't avoid it. But I feel like I've grown a really great community, and I've just really wanted to start sharing more. I get it, you know? I'm nosy when it comes to my favorite influencers as well. I'm just gonna use my MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation, a classic. I asked you guys on my Instagram to send in some questions. You guys came through. There's some really good questions. I'm gonna answer generally what seems to be the main topics of your guys' interests. And I'm gonna try and keep keep the questions and answers <laughs> as interesting as possible. Now, as far as, by the way, the makeup that I'm wearing, a lot of the items that I'm testing today are my first time using these. If you want to hear some more in-depth thoughts on the products that I'll be testing today, keep an eye out because these products will be featured on a speed reviews because I'm going to put them in that pile when I'm done with these. If you're not following me on Instagram and didn't get to ask me a question, that is your own fault. Morgan Turner Makeup. That's where I'm answering all these questions from. So the first question that I got today 
was one of my favorite questions uh, because I don't think I've ever really answered this on my channel before but it was how did you get into bridal makeup and I think a lot of people forget that I do have technically another job. <laughs> YouTube isn't my only job. Bridal makeup I would say is more seasonally and I am going to take some time off but how I got into bridal makeup so I've done it for like four years and for those wondering especially when I first started at my channel, how I was able to afford my makeup. I worked hard, but YouTube wasn't paying no bills. I used the money that I made from the bridal industry to pay for the makeup for my channel. I had other jobs that I used to pay for my bills, but what I made in makeup stayed in makeup. And I mean, I don't know if any of y'all got married recently or have, you know, a child who just got married, anything like that, but the bridal industry, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, they gouge ya. <laughs> they really do. There's a lot of money if you're working in the bridal industry. So that's how I was able to afford what we have going on around me. But anyways, so how I got into it. I started first doing makeup on other people when I was in college. I wanna say I was like a junior in college. So this isn't something that I'd been doing my whole life or wanted to do my whole life. But the girls in my sorority would come in and ask me to do their makeup and I would charge them like $5 to do their eyeshadow, $10 for a full face. And that's kind of how I decided, okay, I kinda wanna look a little bit more into this, see if I can get into the real world and do this. So one of my birthdays I asked my mom if she would enroll me in a makeup program and if you're local it was the Academy of Makeup in Baltimore and it was a really good course. They gave me a makeup artist certification. It didn't teach me too much technique wise but what it did teach me a lot was hygiene and sanitation which is probably one of the most important things you're gonna have to need to be an actual makeup artist. It's much different than applying makeup on yourself. So from that, I actually saw on the alum Facebook group, a makeup artist, a bridal makeup artist, was looking to hire somebody. And I saw that she was located where I was located. And I emailed her and I was like, hey, so I technically have little to no experience like zero professional experience, but I would be interested in learning and joining your team and essentially almost like interning a little bit, assisting. And so I went to her house. She was completely cool with my lack of experience. She just let me do makeup on somebody and I, I think I did a pretty good job because she hired me. I didn't take brides right away. I spent the first bridal season mostly just doing the bridal party and then I would work alongside her. And then after that first year, I started taking my own brides for her. I don't have my own company. I do some freelancing by myself, but I'm quite picky, honestly. I just prefer to work with a company as like a contractor who, who deals with the contracts and the schedules, the liabilities, pretty much does everything. All I have to do is show up. I really like that. It works for me. It works for my lifestyle. I did at some point consider pursuing like my own company and doing all that. But honestly, you guys, it's just too much work and too much liability. Um, I don't want to have a part of that yet. Maybe in the future, but not right now. But that's how I got into it. That was really long winded. I didn't know exactly yet at the time that I wanted to do bridal makeup. I was just, I had the certification, didn't know really what the next steps were, but saw a bridal company looking for a makeup artist. And in the DMV area, by the way, bridal is where you're going to get the most work. So I saw her and I saw she was very close to me or her studio was, and I gave it a shot and it worked out. I love it. I mean, I still work for her four years later. I'm really sad I have to leave because I'm moving. I would work for her forever if I could. I will put the company down below if you are looking for a DC, Maryland, Virginia makeup artist. Yeah, that's how I got into it and I really like it. For eyes, I've been wanting to try these so bad. I got these a long time ago from Revlon. They look so beautiful. I think we're gonna use this one. The next question is, how do you feel about being far from your family once you move to Florida? And I'm, it's really a bittersweet feeling. So if you don't know, and if you watch my videos, you probably do because I'm so excited and I can't stop talking about it. But my husband and I will be relocating to Florida early next year. Uh, we actually just booked our tickets tonight 
for a few days to go apartment hunting next month. And, oh, it's starting to get real, you guys. There's a whole lot of other complications with that, but... As far as moving away from my family, it's bittersweet. You know, I'm excited to move out and have my own place with my husband. We've been married for over a year and are living with my parents. And I've never really had my own space. So I'm excited for that. But God, I'm going to miss my parents so much. Ideally, you know, if it were up to me, I probably would not have chosen Florida or somewhere so far. I would still move out of my parents' house, but I would probably move a little bit closer to DC and the city where I live, as opposed to being in the suburbs. My husband, he is from Europe. He's from Spain. So he's moved away from his family to be with me. So I kind of was like, I remember having a conversation with him and I was like, you know what, why don't you choose the first place that we live? He wasn't really happy in the area that we are in right now. And he chose Florida, which makes a lot of sense. We're looking into Southern Florida. So there's so much more Spanish speaking there. My husband's first language is Spanish. When Jose's family comes visits, They'll be able to navigate in South Florida. Jose loves the sun. We're giving Florida a shot. We're not buying a house or anything. We're just doing the, probably the most adventurous thing that I've personally ever done. I'm excited about that. To apply on my eyelid, by the way, I am using my Esum W21 for my set. This is a really nice stiff brush, so it's going to dig up the product to really pack it onto the eyelid. So I really wasn't ready to move so far for my family. I never really saw that for myself. So I'm a little nervous. I'm really sad. But I moved away, I want to say like four hours away for college. So that's how I know it is possible and I will be okay. This is a lot further than I've ever lived from my parents and my family. I really am not seeing it as something that is permanent. You know, my husband and I are very open to coming back or finding another place that we like. We just, we don't have any kids. My job has a lot of flexibility. I can live wherever I want to live. So we're taking advantage of that and trying something out. And yeah, I'm really sad, but I also think it's part of growing up. And but I am more excited than I am sad. And thank goodness we live in the time of FaceTime. So yeah, so I know I do not like my eye look. But we're just gonna keep going with it. I think this quad is a weird array of colors. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep on keeping on with it. How am I 20 minutes into filming and I've only answered two questions? Favorite and least favorite part of your day. So I'm thinking about a typical Monday through Friday for me. My favorite part of the day. Huh. Hmm. Honestly, I love relaxing. I love it when my filming is done for the day and sitting down right now in front of my Christmas tree and editing or watching TV. I just love the feeling of being surrounded by the Christmas lights. So that's definitely my favorite part of the day right now is being done with filming and being able to kind of chill with my Christmas lights by the Christmas tree. My least favorite part of the day, I'm using my Esam B33 brush in my set, is definitely working out. <laughs> oh my gosh I like working out but I hate working out um and really just the motivation to do it takes a lot out of me I think about it all day until I get it done and I kind of revolve my day I feel like around working out like what time I film depends on when I work out what time I edit depends on what time I work out what I film depends on what time I work out so even though I don't like working out and it's my least favorite part of the day, you must do it, okay? It's essential for your health. That's the PE teacher and me talking, but I just, I like it when it's done. That's also my other favorite part of the day, when my working out is done. I don't know about this eye look, but I'm gonna keep going. Trying out a Revlon liquid liner. Have you ever regret leaving work to do YouTube full time? So if you are new here, I was a teacher for three years. Kind of. That first year I was like a student teacher for the first half and then I was a long-term sub for the second half of the year. But let's say I've been teaching for three years. And then I left teaching about six months ago to do YouTube full-time. And to answer your question, no. I do not regret it. I feel like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel a super strong sense of peace with my decision and... I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't looked back at all. I just, I know I've made the right decision. And it's not that I didn't like teaching. I really 
did like teaching, but teaching was not my passion. It felt like a job to me, a job that I enjoyed, but there's a lot of parts of teaching that are so extremely stressful. There's a lot that comes with the job. It's not just about being with the kids and loving kids. Beauty and makeup and creating YouTube videos and being able to play with makeup and review it, that is my passion. And I mean, luckily, it's been going really well for me, I would say. I've been able to grow my channel even more with the more time that I've had. I've gotten a lot more opportunities because I have the time to take them. It's been awesome. I love it and I never feel really stressed at all. I just feel pure happiness. Like I have my dream job and I feel like I have my dream job. <laughs> this is what it feels like to love what you do. Uh, so yeah, no, I don't regret it. I 100% made the right decision for me. I'm going to take the V09 brush from my brush set and I'm taking just a random black eyeshadow I had lying around. We're gonna create the cat eye look that I've been doing. So how we do this with this brush, it's magical and so easy. All you do with the black shadow on the brush, fill in the tight line like that and then with whatever is left, just extend and that's it. And you can go in and add a little bit more color if you want it to be more dramatic or you can leave it soft like that for a more wearable look. It's that easy, it's this brush. I've never been able to do this cat eye effect until I started doing this technique with this brush. Cannot recommend it enough, look at that. Perfect, okay, anyways, had to share that. Next question, so where's your wedding ring and are you gonna have kids in the future? Do I foresee that? I've been asked this a couple of times. I do have a wedding ring. I am actually married. There's two reasons specifically. I cannot stand the feeling of rings on my finger. I just like take them off or if they're on in my sleep, I take them off. I cannot wear rings on my fingers. I'm gonna take a little bit of foundation on my brush. By the way, this is the Isum W25 and this is for my brush set, hee <laughs> hee. I'm putting a little bit of foundation on it and I'm just going to clean up this area right here. Make it look prettier and more bright. But anyways, can't stand the feeling of rings on my finger, but I'm staring at my ring right now. It's here. And two, one time my ring fell off my finger and I almost lost it and that freaked me out. So, <laughs> so I will wear it when I go out and stuff, but it's not a part of my everyday routine because I just don't... I don't like the feeling of it. <laughs> I don't really like the feeling of my rings and I'm terrified it's going to fall off and I got it sized and everything. I don't I don't know why. But anyways, I'm considering just buying some cheap rings, honestly, so that way I don't feel like I'm going to lose it. I just need to buy some cheap rings and that'll suffice. I cannot get this thing open. Okay. And then the kids in the future I definitely do want to have kids in the future if that's possible for us. Yeah, Jose and I do plan to have kids, but not anytime soon. Most likely not for like another three or four years. We're not ready to have kids yet. You know, I feel like we got married pretty young compared to most people my age. I mean, some people get married my age, but we're, we're a little bit on the young side. We are kind of in a little bit of a late start because my husband only graduated college last year. He hasn't even been able to use his degree or look for a job because we didn't get his green card up until literally a month ago. And we're just waiting for him to get a job after we move. I'm gonna use a W25 brush to place down this cream from this e.l.f. Electric Mood Quad, which is cream products. Ooh, this is a great color. I feel like we're kind of getting a little bit of a late start because of that. But now that we have the work visa, we're moving out and then we're gonna get things going. But we don't want kids for probably another three years. We're just not ready yet. We want to live life, enjoy the money that we have on ourselves, travel more, and then we do want to have kids, but not yet. Where in Spain is your husband from? So he's from Madrid, born and raised. He is from a suburb right outside of Madrid, but obviously has spent most of his life like in Madrid or near Madrid. It's like me. I don't live in DC, but I say I'm from like D the DC area because I live close enough. Do you know where you're moving to? So not exactly. <laughs> we have officially decided we kind of teeter-tottered a few different options around southern Florida. We were thinking about Tampa for a while. 
this summer. Ultimately, what we decided on is we want to move to Miami, Miami for this first year. I feel like there's more job opportunities out there for Jose and we want to live somewhere cool for the first year at least and then we'll suss out the area and see if that's where we actually want to stay but we did decide we're just we're gonna live in expensive Miami. <laughs> we tried to look at parts around Miami because Miami is just so much more expensive than the rest but I think that's just the best one for us for the first year. Like I said, we're definitely open to changing once the lease runs out. Yeah, a lot of questions on where we decided to go for Florida. Someone said, do you have any pets? I do not right now. I had, when I first started my channel, I think two or three dogs. I can't remember the exact number, but we got all of our dogs when I was eight or around that age, eight, nine, ten. So unfortunately, they all kind of passed around the same time. Um, in the last few years, I think the last dog that we had, Pippa, passed away in January of last year. So no, not at the moment. When I move, I would like to get a cat. I'm more of a dog person, but I would rather have a cat in an apartment. Wow, this blush is really pretty from Milani. I'll have it linked down below. I really like it, but I want to get something powder to put on top of it. Using my X52 brush, I'm just going to mix these two. So yeah, I do want to get a cat once we get settled in. Was there any one thing that helped your channel grow? So I don't want to say every channel should do this. It depends on what you want your channel to be, but I, from the beginning, kind of decided that I was going to be a makeup review channel. So what helped my channel grow was reviewing the new makeup that came out because people are searching for it. So your channel is more likely to be found. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to use my X51 brush to set around the rest of my face. So for me, the strategy that worked for growth was just reviewing those new products because people were searching for it. I get asked this a lot. Do you need to have all the new products for your channel to grow? In my case, like that is what worked. That is a strategy that you can use. There are more strategies that you can use to grow, but it depends on what you want your channel to be. Just think about whether you want to be a review channel, a, I don't know, cruelty-free channel, a minimalist makeup channel, whatever you want it to be. About in that area, what people would be searching. But I will say having the new products does help with discoverability, especially when you're a newer channel, but that doesn't mean it's always going to work for everybody and it's not always going to be the most sustainable either, but that is what worked for my channel. And consistency, y'all, I've been posting multiple days a week for years. <laughs> I've been very consistent this whole time. <laughs> Molly asked me, how is the Espanol coming? Girly, it is not. Okay, I've officially decided when I move, I'm always talking about this dang move, but when I move, I think there's going to be a lot of classes available for Spanish in Miami, so I'm signing up for a Spanish class in Miami. I mean, listen, I would say I know enough Spanish for a two-year-old, okay? I took three years of Spanish, almost four, I think. No, I took three years of Spanish in school, I lost it all and I wasn't even really good at the class. I think I got like a C, but I know some words, but it's not coming along, but I will take my word for it, be taking a Spanish class. <laughs> I'm going to sign up for one. I've already decided that. Another question, have you found an apartment in Miami? Nope, we are going the beginning of January to see what's available, but apparently I was talking to a realtor. The Miami market is nuts. Everything is flying like hotcakes. So I don't even know that when we go, we will even secure an apartment because I am being a little bit picky. I'm not going to lie. We don't have the biggest budget, but for my job, we need some space. And Miami is very expensive. So the right apartment at the right price is going to have to come along. We were initially looking for a two bedroom, but I just think for the area that we're looking in, uh, financially, it's not possible. We're gonna have to get super lucky if that's the case. So now we're looking for a one bedroom that is spacious. So that way I can have my filming space in there. So we'll see. And I don't even know if the week that we go there that we're gonna find anything. 
we might have to pick one blindly because the right one is going to have to come up for me to be able to like do my work and for us to be able to afford it. Now that you are full-time creating content, what's your goal for your career? A good question. I mean, honestly, my goal has never been to have like a million subscribers or anything like that. I've always just wanted to be comfortable. I want to be financially comfortable. I don't want to be rich. I mean, I'll take it if I could, but I just want to be financially comfortable and to be able to just live a relaxed, stress-free life. I'm not looking to be the number one best makeup reviewer on YouTube. That does not appeal to me. Diving into this Milani lipstick that I heard was very popular. <sighs> I don't know, I mean, I literally just want to be doing what I'm doing right now and not have to worry about finances, anything like that. I just want to be comfortable. Um, I mean, I would eventually, I guess, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm really along for the ride. As long as I can continue to pay my bills by reviewing makeup just like I am right now, I am already there. I guess in terms of numbers though, I do want to hit 100,000. I have never ever thought about going past 100,000. Like 100,000 was the ultimate unbelievable never thought I'll get there kind of number. So when I hit 100,000, like that was my lifetime goal. So yeah, I mean, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm such a homebody, you guys. I'm very introverted. I just like playing with makeup, creating looks playing with the new makeup, telling you guys my thoughts. As long as I can keep doing that, throw in some traveling here and there, a nice, comfortable, pretty home, I am completely, completely content. But we'll see where it takes us, you know? You know what? Doing YouTube and strategizing growth is still a lot of fun with for me, you know? So we'll see. I like looking at the analytics and stuff. Uh, 2022 goals for your channel slash platforms. Okay, so this one is easy. This one I do know. For my channel 2022, I want to hit 100k. That's it. That's all I have. That's my only channel goal. For my Instagram, I just want to continue to grow that. I don't have too many goals for my Instagram. I would like to take some more partnerships on there probably because that platform is growing. And I do want to uh, get really started on my TikTok game. I'm terrible at that. So those are it. I have like a thousand TikTok followers. I would like more, but in order for me to get more, I am going to have to actually create TikToks. So we'll see how that goes. I love the long form content, you guys. I talk too much. I've tried making TikToks before and I talk entirely too much because I'm used to the YouTube stuff. This is the look, by the way. I think we're going to stop it here. I played with some interesting products. But I still want to keep answering questions. So let's do that. <laughs> Next question is, how did you and your husband meet? We went to college together. So he was one of the foreign students at my school. And that's how we met. <laughs> because we went to the same school. Least favorite step in your makeup routine? Eyebrows. They just take entirely way too long. Or winged liner. Because, you know, you, you never really know how it's going to turn out. Or if it's going to turn out good. So one of those two. How does your mom feel about you moving out of state? I mean, she's obviously very sad that I'm moving out. We've had a good run together these last, I want to say three years since I graduated college. I did live away when I was in college, like four hours away. And then I came back and she's been hanging on to me tight since then. But my mom is from Singapore. She moved to America for college. So she definitely is one that understands that this is part of growing up. And sometimes this is just what you have to do. They're sad, but they are very very understanding and they have not discouraged what I wanted to do at all which I think it's great they've been very supportive in my decision no matter what it means or how it makes them feel because this is part of growing up I have to learn this is me being adventurous why did you change your background I love seeing your collection in the back just because this is more holiday-y and also it gets dark at four o'clock and honestly when I I have my collection in the background. It was only because that was facing towards the window, so I got the natural light. It's a lighting issue, so the white background is better with studio lighting, and since it gets dark so early, the time window that I have to film is so much smaller, so I'm more so filming in the evenings now. So the lighting is just better with the white background. And also I just love having the Christmas decor and it was a nice change. But I prefer my collection background and the lighting. But there's like no time in the day for me to film with the natural lighting. So this just 
works better with my lighting situation. Very technical <laughs> reason why. Once COVID is over, what place would you like to go first? Spain. Well, we'll probably go to Spain before COVID is over. Whenever Jose gets his green card and is allowed to travel, we will probably go to Spain because we got to see family. But if that's not the case, then I would love to either go to Hawaii or Singapore, where my mom is from. I've never been to Singapore before. My parents and I have been talking about making a trip to Singapore. I really, really do want to go. What shows are you watching at the moment? So a couple weeks ago, I finished Game of Thrones. So good. It's not my normal style of television show that I would watch, but you really do get stuck into the storyline. I wish I could do a whole video talking about Game of Thrones because I have my thoughts. And at the current moment, I am watching Selling Sunset. It's a terrible show, but so good. Definitely a guilty pleasure. So yeah, I think those are the two. I'm not really watching shows right now though because it's Vlogmas and I'm very busy, but just finished Game of Thrones and I'm watching Selling Sunset. And last and final question. Is being a full-time YouTuber everything you expected? Yes. I mean, I have nothing really but positive things to say about going full-time on YouTube. I genuinely feel like at this moment of time, this was the best decision for me. This is my passion and this is what I was meant to do. It just feels right in every way. But one thing that I didn't expect, I thought that because I was a full-time teacher and doing YouTube basically full-time, that I was gonna be able to whip content out in seconds once I did this full-time. Uh-uh. It is still just as tedious. And I swear in some cases takes me longer to create content now because I'm not working double time. I'm just working my normal work hours. So I'm not getting much more done than I did than when I was also teaching. And also, I'm putting more time into my videos, more time into my swatches, more time into my editing, more time into Instagram and creating other content. So that also is making everything take longer. So I thought I was just going to be able to whip out content on every single platform like that. But it's really hard to do that still as full time. Everything takes so long. Being a YouTuber, I'm sorry, but at least in the space that I'm in and people are free to disagree with me, but being a YouTuber, it's not hard. At least in the beauty space, it's not hard. But what it is, is time consuming. Everything takes forever. It's very, very tedious. So I feel like when I was a teacher, I got so much done because I would teach eight classes a day. So that is, makes me feel accomplished. For me, in a work day, I film, edit, and upload one video and sometimes not even that and that makes me feel a lot less accomplished but anyways it's going great i love it thank you for asking and there we have it those are all of the questions to my q a now it's time for the giveaway hold on this is my biggest box yet i have a bunch of random goodies in here i have some bare mineral sets a bh cosmetics brush set this awesome Kaja set, Kopari, Salon Perfect, Elf, lots of ColourPop, Base Blue, Kopari. I have a Christian Audette lipstick, and there's a lot more in here. It's just a hodgepodge of a bunch of goodies. So if you would like to enter my 75k giveaway, it is open internationally. You must be subscribed to me and you must be following me on Instagram, Morgan Turner Makeup. Make sure you don't forget to follow me on Instagram because there was people who won in the last giveaway that couldn't win because they weren't following me. And then you must like this video and comment down below your favorite eyeshadow palette because I love eyeshadow palettes and also your Instagram handle because that is how I will contact the winner is through Instagram message so make sure you put that way for me to contact you. You can also put your email if you don't have an Instagram that's fine uh, but make sure you put some form for me to contact you but I do prefer Instagram and it's going to end a week from today. Make sure you check out the description box. That's going to have all the giveaway details in case I forgot anything. And finally, a huge thank you to Muse Beauty Pro for sponsoring today's video. Make sure if you are interested in picking up my brush set, it is only available until December 26th. And you have to shop today if you want to get it by Christmas time. And we have that awesome Affirm offer there. So... There we have it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.